Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, our live stream today. So happy to have you here uh, at seminar. I'm Lauren. And today I am joined by uh, we we have crust with us today. I'm so excited to be um, chatting with you. Welcome to the live stream. We have a ton of people in the chat. Um, hello, everyone. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, what's going on? Thanks, Lauren, for the warm introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased and our team is pleased to be here as well to uh, let you guys know what you can do with Cross Network. I'm happy to provide you with a small intro about it and um, also here for any questions that might pop up. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So folks, um, if you are in the chat, um, Leon, hello, Frank, hello, um, Rui, we see you're excited to talk about Cross. That's awesome. The enthusiasm is felt and very much appreciated. If you have questions, please, please, please put them in the chat. We will talk about them. We welcome a tangent. We welcome uh, a derailment, if you will. Um, but yeah, so let's, um, I don't know, where should we even begin? What's this journey like? How do we... Um, do we have a quick one-liner for folks that are curious about what is crust? How do we how do we want to start? Should I pull up your screen? Sure. Let, let's just jump into it, and Hell yeah. um, I maybe can can yeah start talking about. Oh my crust god! Wait, before we even start, your Twitter handle. Oh. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's always a good uh, door opener. Sure. Yeah. It's a good way to start it off. Um, okay, cool. Well, okay. So start, tell me, so you, you do BD, um, business development for Crest. What's your journey to joining this team? Tell me about yourselves first and foremost. Sure. Um, well, I'm, I'm with Crest now for about two years. Um, okay. I, I, I joined as a community manager, moved to cool. European ambassador and uh, now BD lead for Crest Network. Amazing. Be before I started my journey in Web3, I also was involved in like um, the technical field. And more specifically, I was working in uh, Web2 cloud computing for a software as a service startup for business applications. So for me, it was just the next evolutional step from Web2 to Web3. Yeah, and, um, I love that. I'm happy to be here, yeah. And how big is the Crust team? Um, at the moment, we have around 20, 20 persons. Nice. Very um, cool distributed over the entire globe. Um, our head Love offices it. are in Shanghai. Our foundation is in Singapore. Okay. Um, personally, I am located in Germany. Um, All right. But we also have some team members at the uh, Bay Area, San Francisco. And, yeah, uh, you have some folks in the US. We <laughs> originally had this scheduled. So, okay, I should clarify. this. It's 10 a.m. where I live. I live on the East Coast. Um, but we had originally booked this with someone on your team that was on the West Coast. So yeah, that would be 7 a.m. Tech check around 6 a.m. for them. It wouldn't have worked out. That was like, you know, being global, globally distributed is a perk, but also, you know, time zones are tough. Um, exactly. Uh, we got, we have a hello crusty. Is that a nickname for crust? I don't know if that works. Crust is yeah. That you, know, you can teeter <laughs> towards some funny nicknames. I'm sure. Um, East coast. Yes. So yeah, we have lots of, um, everyone so happy to have you here and chatting with us today. Um, but yeah. Okay. So what is, what's crust? <laughs> let's start Good there. Question. Yeah, let's start there. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so to put it very simple, Crust is a layer one uh, blockchain built on um, Polkadot substrate framework yeah. for a specific use case, which is decentralized storage. Okay. And um, decentralized storage is something uh, that maybe doesn't enjoy the, the, the hype. Uh, you know like what? Storage is sexy. Stop it. No, do not give yourself that credit. Um, we have a coin question really quickly. Um, if crew will be available, is that your, that's your coin CRU? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I read the question. Um, actually we are working on it. Uh, okay. we, we are, um, in the process of opening multiple channels with, with other private chains cool. to actually launch or, or list our token at um, decentralized exchanges in the Polkadot ecosystem. So huh. just be a little bit more patient with us. Yeah. Um, we're working on a channel with Moonbeam, with Equilibrium. We already cool. uh, opened one, but uh, there is more to come. And uh, yeah, we're also working hey, on this. I should have asked you, are you going to be at Decoded in a month now? I realize it's so soon. I will indeed. And yeah. um, we also will represent it at the um, showcase Seven. stage with okay. a um, oh. 
yeah, with a speaking slot. And I personally will also join the summit, which is two days ahead of you. Oh my gosh, see you so soon. I love that. Um, okay, back to Crest. Yes, so you were a decentralized cloud storage protocol, and you're, it's based on... Um, one of my favorite acronyms. Oh, I should say on this stream, we try our best to not use jargon to, you know, when we use a word or term to define it so that folks who are relatively new to the space, um, don't feel left out. Um, so if we ever are referencing IPFS, we mm -hmm. should hear it now, uh, that it's interplanetary, right? Interplanetary I will, file yeah. system. Okay. Correct. But yeah, no, I, I will get to that. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to provide you with all infos that are needed to, to, to get the point. Um, if there are any questions, feel free to pop it in if you don't yeah. understand something, if I uh, need to explain something more in detail. Um, um, Jafar you know. was, we were chatting with Jafar two weeks ago and we were talking about his journey to learn Rust. So that's amazing that you are learning Rust. You've got it now, you're an expert. All right, we need you. Please apply today. Um, yeah. And thank you for the answer for the coin. Yes, appreciate it so much. TLAs that can, G oh, G <laughs> okay, yes, the, okay, yes, we don't love acronyms. We're trying to be welcoming. I thought that you put GT, go well, the the phrase that or the acronym that I always thought stood for go to the moon, or go. Oh. T TG, let's go. I think it means like, let's go to market. No way. Actually, now I'm forgetting. But yeah, there's some that I like forever will be confused about. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Let's just then dive in. Um, yes, this one. LG. I always thought that stood for going to the moon. <laughs> I don't think it does. But anyway, it's easy to get confused. <laughs> Anyhow, so let's, um, let's dive in. Let's do it. Cool. Um, yeah, so, so welcome again from my side, um, and uh, thanks for joining this live session. I hope you will learn something interesting and something you also might be able to utilize down the road, um, especially if you are building uh, in the Polkadot space yourself. Uh, but before we go into uh, what Crust Networking specifically is and how we solve um, specific problems, I, yep. would like to, I would like to look at um, our motivation the, the importance of decentralized storage, maybe even the sure. evolution of uh, storage a over history the time. lesson. I love it. Take me there. Okay. A little bit. We're trying um, to like make storage cool, is what we're <laughs> that's it, our goal it, today. It is, it is indeed. It's cool. And maybe you see it the way I do uh, after this presentation. Yes. We'll be dreaming yeah. of storage solutions. I'm, I'm quite sure everybody has seen this evolution from Web 1 over Web 2 to Web 3. And sure. I like to draw this analogy for storage systems as well. And uh, in the beginning, we had local storage. So we had like um, huge data centers and companies. We had in our private homes, we had like uh, a lot of um, HDDs where we kept our data locally, which was really good because we were in full control of the data. We had all the ownership of the data. But on the other hand, it was con inconvenient or at, yeah, to some degrees even very costly because, again, sure. you needed the hardware. Um, it wasn't very flexible. You needed someone to maintain the hardware and so on. Um, and then we, we moved towards Web2 where we saw centralized cloud storage services sure. popping up, AWS, Google Cloud, Dropbox. Um, this was very convenient because for the very first time we, we were able to experience the anywhere and any time principle to access our data. Yeah, um, suddenly we could pull it up on our phone and have that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's probably a solution a lot of folks are familiar with that are watching right now. Yeah, and, and, and we do enjoy it because of the, the really nice usability and um, it's quite reliable, but it also right. comes with some downsides. And well, for uh, sure, of, it's incredibly problematic. Tell me why. <laughs> yeah, and one of the downsides, for example, is that like, unless uh, with the former stage for local storage, we don't have the ownership over our data anymore. And this means basically that if AWS or Google doesn't like what you store on their, their servers, um, they might be able to censor it. And yep. um, that's something we don't want. And on the other hand, they are the ones using our data to put that into user profiles and to sell this data down the road to other data uh, houses and... Um, yeah, monetize basically our, our data, our user behavior. And um, that's something we don't want in Web, two, uh, in web 3. Web and three, yeah. with Web 3 now, we have basically the uh, possibility to combine advantages out of both the local storage, 
or respectively the ownership part of the local storage and the convenience from the um, centralized cloud storage, the anywhere, anytime principle to have like replications, um, but all while maintaining the ownership of our data. And um, that's exactly what we want because when we, when we talk about Web3, then we say the biggest differentiator to Web2 is actually the part of the ownership. And exactly. so, yeah, and, and we do that for, for a lot of assets, um, NFTs, tokens, and so on. Even our liquidity positions, we, we, can, we can have our ownership and proof of ownership. But in most cases, we don't do that for our data yet. And um, looking at Web2 and most of, the, most of the data in Web2 is actually user data, um, then uh, it's the wrong direction we are going. And, and we want to have that um, with the power of the, or the power should be with the user. Yes. And not with some centralized institution that could gatekeep ah. our data and uh, whatnot. No gatekeeping here. We want that solution. I'm bought into the vision. Hopefully you in the chat are too. We have a question that Jafar, I promise we will get to. Um, I think we're still in the tar part about like discussing why this is a solution in itself. Um, but then we'll definitely get to the point in which we can talk about how you too can make the most of this solution so yes yeah. promise to promise to acknowledge it um but yeah thank you for um a um a summary of why why decentralized cloud storage uh i think it's a really compelling story and um i think until you have been hit with it, it it's like it feels almost like hypothetical this idea of being blocked or being censored on that um but I don't think you need to experience it yourself to be bought into why why this is necessary. And in fact, like you shouldn't. So um, yeah, folks, let me know if this resonates with you. Um, I hope it does. Yeah, I, I have I brought some real world events with us. We okay. see them, uh, of, okay. of, of uh, issues we see that yeah. evolve from centralized cloud storages. But yeah, right. we will get to that later. Very but good. before to jump to the next slide, I just quickly want to want to um, highlight the graph below, and this actually yeah. shows the um, demand of data storage over time, mm. um, and it's even forecasted for the future. And we see that like we, the the the, the amount of data stored in the world is growing exponentially. Um, it's even estimated that we double the amount of data every two to three years from now. And this obviously is um, powered and fostered by, um, yeah, Internet of Things, smart devices, artificial intelligence, and um, a lot of different things. We, we, we rely even yeah, stronger and stronger on data in the future, and data becomes more and more valuable for all those processes. And, um, yeah, that's why we also should treat data uh, accordingly. So... I mean, absolutely. I think that that it, it's not stopping. We need storage. It's going to grow. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> cool. We're on one page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, then let's jump to the next slide. And it's also yeah, why storage in Web3 is broken. And um, one part is this, the decentralization. We have a lot of applications, services, solutions already running in Web3, running um, on the blockchain. Um, but most of them still rely on some kind of centralized solutions or, mm, or most of the yeah most of most of solutions somehow need data storage in some form mm. or the other right. um, but they um, unfortunately often still tend to use um, the institutional service providers like AWS Google Cloud etc and um, that's something we want to avoid because you want right decentralization also on the most fundamental layer. And this is like the data layer, the, the decentralized infrastructure beyond this. And um, when we have our data just in one data center in uh, somewhere in one location, um, then we are highly exposed to any kind of single point of failure events. And right. uh, we don't want that. We want to have replication. We want to have decentralization of our data and not one um, party in control. Right. And um, yeah, that's also the part of the data ownership. Another part is the availability. Um, we see that like we have experienced multiple downtimes of decentralized applications. Sometimes it's, it's, it's not as crucial. In some parts, let's say I have an open leverage position and I can't reach um, the user interface of my web page because mm -hmm. my centralized provider has an outage or a single point of failure event. Then like I might get liquidated and uh, I might not be able to close my position or to back it up uh, or sure. whatnot. 
Yeah, and, I mean, it, yeah, it, um, the example was a silly one, but when the geo cities, you know, it just, it, things can just be completely lost and someone else decides that. And yeah, I want ownership of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. True. And yeah, the next part is just the availability, uh, the usability and interoperability. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's it's hard to, 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 to work and to operate also. with solutions that are already existing. And um, there is no real interoperability or frictionless interoperability. And that's something uh, we want to change with cross network. And yeah, what is cross network? Let's get to this point. And as I already said, Crust is a decentralized storage protocol. And we utilize the IPFS um, file system. IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System. Mm -hmm. It's a new way of addressing data in the web. And the big differentiator between um, normal, let's say, HTTPS-based uh, addressing of data is that um, IPFS uses or addresses the data itself and mm -hmm. not the location where it's stored, which means um, I could, for example, if you're in a room with, with 10 people, I could say um, Lauren is... or when I want when I want to talk about you, I could say I want to talk about the person sitting on chair number one in, ray, right. uh, in, in row A, or I could say I want to address Lauren because she is sitting on on chair number one A, and um, by having the by just addressing the location, you could get up and somebody else could sit down in your chair, but uh -huh. I still address the same location, so the content might be different. And that's what IPFS is solving very nicely um, with uh, CIDs. They call that content uh, identifier. Mm -hmm. And this is basically like a normal HTTPS link that points yeah, to a location. absolutely. Just instead um, of points to the data. And we, we actually, so wait, let me switch my camera real quick um, to we in the past have you i oh you can only kind of see it but it's the um cubbies that i have um we use those as examples sometimes of like we can reference that um and i think it was kilt that we were talking about it last time um but yeah so that makes sense um and how we like organize it and the matchmaking service that happens we have a couple questions in the chat um don't want to get too derailed but um, I want to say here, Richard, saying that we love the idea of a decentralized storage to remove the need to use services like AWS. How many dApps are already running on Crust? Mm -hmm. A good question. Um, we already have multiple dApps yeah. and services running on Crust Network, especially uh, within the Polkadot ecosystem. I have some very specific use cases with me uh, in some so we'll slides talk about. Cool. below. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, you will see the the, the partners. Yeah. And I think you have the, you've kind of hooked the audience because here Aaron references um, when the NFTs vanished, when FTX servers went offline, Jafar says, okay, well then it sounds like Crest can solve that problem. If, yeah. If, if you like, so yeah, I think we, you have and made the like connection. Folks are into it. We're, we're all, and then it also, if we could test the storage services, you know, how do you know if it's working? That question came up as well. Cool. Yeah, um, first of all, to the to the FTX um, thing, I, I want to say, yeah, that's that totally could have been avoided with Crust um, because FTX actually allowed people to mint yeah, NFTs through their UI. But the issue right. was they used the centralized service provider to store all the metadata of the NFTs. I don't know if it was okay. AWS or it was Google or whatnot. Sure. But um, when FTX went down and they went bankrupt, then obviously they stopped paying for their services to, to run their business. And um, so FTX basically stopped paying AWS or Google Cloud or wherever they had it stored and they uh, deleted the data and all data was vanished. And mm -hmm. um, that's, let's say the link in the NFT contract is still existing, but when I want to pull up this link, it ends at a very expensive 404 error page. And um, that's something we don't want, want to have in uh, Web3 when we're talking about uh, digital assets that might be worth, I don't know, five, six digits. Um, we want to have a guarantee that, it, uh, that the data stays available. We don't want to put the trust in one centralized provider who has to guarantee the data, has to make sure that my data persists online. Um, yeah. We want to have, in best case, the, a guarantee and with on-chain proof and uh, ownership uh, with ourselves. And um, yeah, that could have been avoided. Great. So great exactly. example then, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Crust can be 
try it out um, quite easily. Our product okay. is totally live and running, uh, fully operational. So we have different um, op options to try out our product via our decentralized storage market or via our um, yeah, apps like crustfiles.io. It's like oh, a Oh, right, which application. we'll get to. I kind of want to shout this out, this comment. We don't want you to be perceiving Crust as AWS. It's not switching out one for the other. It's a different solution that isn't centralized, right? Like that's, um, it's not just like another version of it though. It's, um, it's, it's, no, it's not another version of AWS. Right. It's, a, it's a totally different file system. Exactly, exactly. Um, depending on the use case, uh, I we, we can't do everything on Crust Network because in some in some situation and scenarios, centralized service providers still have an advantage, especially when we want to um, combine it yeah. with cloud computing resources and so on. Um, but for for most of the use cases, Crust Network can be used just as AWS, but it's a little bit different. Um, yeah. But it it works basically um, comparable. Yeah. Okay. So data is fragmented and stored in multiple node locations, and then those pointers are also hashed from Richard. Yeah. I, IPFS fragments the data um, already, so that's not specific, not cross specific. Um, yeah. What what is cross specific is that we work with a high replica approach, which means yeah. um, we provide you with a lot of repli uh, replicas distributed over our network. Mm -hmm. um, because in normal IPFS, you don't really have a guarantee over how many replicas you get, and also no guarantee for how long these replicas will stay available because the IPFS network in itself is not incentivized, which means everybody providing their resources is doing it on free will. And right. um, they have also no real incentivization to hold on to data for a very, very long term money. It, it blocks their capacities and uh, might drain their, their, their bandwidth or whatnot. So um, to have this, to, or to, 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 to make sure that you have this um, replication and to have your file availability on IPFS that it doesn't vanish, you need to pin your files. And that's exactly what Cross Network is doing. Yeah. By pinning your files to our network with a very high amount of replicas, I think on average we have 33 replicas per file distributed on our network. And um, yeah, this also ensures decentralization on the most physical file level, right. not just um, yeah, on the protocol level. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for that. I hope this answered the question. I think it does, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And uh, we provide such an incentive and service layer for the IPFS framework, which okay. means um, users or people who want to provide their resources to the IPFS network yep. can, join our net can join our protocol mm -hmm. and provide their resources to our network. In exchange okay. for that, they receive rewards. On the one hand, they receive blockchain emissions. And on the other hand, they receive the actual um, service fee from providing their resources. Okay. And um, yeah, we have a protocol stack in between that basically matches the demand and the supply side. So um, on the one hand, we have the, um, the, the, the network, uh, mm. which is our decentralized physical infrastructure, all our storage resources. And on the right-hand side, we have the demand for different cold storage applications, hot storage applications, hosting, file sharing, whatnot. And yeah, in the middle, we have our cross-protocol stack and our um, interoperability layer with different cross-storage interfaces, APIs, uh, software developer kits. We have a um, storage palette on Substrate. Um, very A lot of different endpoints to actually connect with our um, protocol and to use our um, storage capacities. Yeah. Um, cool. Yes, Jafar, I think that that, yeah, spot on. So, oh, and you know what? I skipped a question. It's a competitor question. Um, a cache, a cache network and how we differentiate. Um, I, I know a cache network. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with it, but I know they focus more on the cloud computing part or, or the cloud computing together with storage. But as far as I know, they don't use IPFS. And we specifically... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see anything called out from them about that in their... Yeah, we specifically their... chose IPFS because uh, we believe IPFS yeah. is, is the most adopted, by far the most adopted um, decentralized storage protocol out there. Um, nice. It's battle-proven um, and it has by far, yeah, the, the, the most usage. When we look at ARI, for example, I think the entire ARI net has a storage capacity of 100... 
20 terabyte mm -hmm. and, and just crust has a storage capacity of 750,000 terabytes. Mm. Um, that's yeah, because it's on chain storage, it's super hard to scale because basically every node has to carry all the data. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so crust is uh, more scalable. I, I, but I don't know exactly about a cache. I could tell you a little bit more about five. Yeah, I mean, it, no, 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 no. It's it's hard to be able to reference everything out there. So thank you for it. That's a that was a good summary. You're welcome. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's look at some network metrics. Like I already said, we have um, 725 petabytes of storage, or 725,000 terabytes. Um, we have uh, at the moment 1,724 yeah, nodes that contribute their storage resources to our network. Overall, we have um, since our mainnet launch in September 21 already over 1.7 million unique files uploaded. Nice. And our storage fee is super cheap, with like below okay. uh, 0 0.001 uh, dollar per gigabyte. Nice. So as you can see, um, we, are, we are very decentralized, even on the most physical uh, decentralized level. Um, not all storage nodes are also validators. We have a set of 70 validators at the moment, nice. um, but also those numbers of um, storage nodes that provide cool. their storage resources. Then what, how can we help out with uh, looking at the IPFS service landscape? So what we do is we provide across IPFS gateway services. So that's basically what you need to upload, to download, to retrieve your data. And Crust uses super fast uh, Thunderbolt gateways. We also just recently launched a um, community gateway program where we reward oh. people for operating gateways. Um, and the cool thing is you don't have to pay for any retrievals. So you pay for the storage and this includes all retrievals uh, unlimited. Unlimited. Wow, I love that. Uh, then the next one, which is probably yeah, the most prominent service, is our decentralized um, pinning service for IPFS. This basically works the same way like you would use Pinata, for example, when you want to pin mm -hmm. your files. And what makes us special is that we have a multi-replica file storage approach um, with, yeah, on average, our 33 replicas all distributed all over the world. And this also makes the performance better because IPFS can retrieve data from multiple sources at the same time. And obviously when you have more nodes carrying the data or hosting the data, then you can retrieve it from multiple end sources at the same time. Mm. And at the same point, the chance that the node is close to you to improve latency, et cetera, is higher than if you just had uh, one replica in a centralized data center, again, operated by a centralized um, provider like Pinata. Yeah, sure. Cool. And last but not least, we also have different file query services um, with our storage explorer where we can validate um, our guaranteed availability, where we can validate the numbers of replicas. We can see which nodes hosts, hosts my data and all of this um, can be checked out to is provide this, users with full transparency. Is this correct? Um, it's a monthly storage fee? No. Um, yeah. We have, we have different kind of models. So um, right. our, the, the minimum storage contract length is six months. Okay. So, um, and everything above is possible. So you can prepay your storage. You can say, I want to um, add a budget to store this file for over 200 years if I want to. Mm -hmm. I, I can say I want to use a kind of subscription-based model where I pay as I go. So I mm -hmm. could um, upload a file. And I can mm -hmm. um, attach or associate my account with this file. And every time this file expires, it will be renewed and the fee will be taken from my account. So it's like an automatic renewal if you want so. Okay. And this, this will be extended as long as you say, oh, no, stop extending the file. Sure. And then we have a question around file corruption. Mm -hmm. um, one second. Okay, um, yeah, that's one of our protocols. Um, that's, for example, we use our meaningful proof of work mechanism. Yeah. This is basically a, um, a mechanism that runs within the local CPU within the, and we utilize TEE. TEE is trusted execution environment. It's basically an enclaved and secure environment within the local CPU um, where nobody can interfere with. And that's, that's, 
basically where we do all data processing. At the same time, um, we have a work inspector that basically checks the notes for the availability of the data. Um, will form that in a work report, will send that on chain, and there it will be compared with um, the work reports of other mm. nodes hosting the same data. So nice. there we can then make the comparison and validate that the data is, um, first of all, still available on the nodes, and B, um, it's not corrupted or yeah, uh, changed in any form. Cool. Um, yeah, I hope that that answers your question, Richard. We have one more. Um, if an entity paying for storage stops, but I want to um, still want the file to be available, could I take overpayment for it? So from the community, you're saying, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this could, Love. This, you can do that on IPFS. Um, as long as you have the CID, this is the, the unique yep. content First. identifier, you could go to our storage market um, put in the CID and say, I want to create an yeah. order for this specific CID number. And in this case, it doesn't matter if you were the one initially uploading the data or if you are just the one who wants to keep the data online. So um, yeah, in case of um, FTX, for example, if they had their data on IPFS, even if they would run their own IPFS server, then um, the community still could have said, hey, send us all CIDs. We will make sure that we pin it with cross network, with whatever. And like that way we can um, keep the data online without you needing to operate your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. Yeah. Great question. Awesome. Cool. Well, I want to see this. Do you have, are we there yet in our demo or no? Oh, more. Okay. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Um, first, let, let's talk about who can use cross network and how, how you can use cross network. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Let's do that. So this, this picture is a little bit outdated. This was from our cross shadow um, network, uh, our, our parachain for the Kusama network, mm -hmm. um, where we already opened different channels with, with different uh, projects. Mm -hmm. But since beginning of this year, we also have our parachain live on um, Polkadot. Yay. And connected. Yay. Good and as already, as already <laughs> said, we have opened. Some noise. <laughs> yeah, we opened the very first channels uh, with, with Equilibrium. We are um, working on it with Moonbeam. And um, Amazing. actually, also Polka.apps um, is hosted on Crust Network, at least the user interface. So cool. I love that. Great shout. So, um, yeah, and, and we have different SDKs. We have um, our substrate palette. You mm -hmm. can connect with us via, via XCMP. Uh, many yep. different ways to do it in the most native way possible. Yeah, and viewers that should be relatively familiar with, with our audience here. So, awesome. Cool. Um, but we also, uh, we are not just limited to the Polkadot right. ecosystem. Right, of course, important to shout out this interoperability. <laughs> yeah, and that really is very important to us. And we, we do that with, um, for example, cross-chain smart contracts. So we yes. deploy um, our own cross-chain smart contract to different ecosystems, for example, Ethereum, Polygon, um, Aptos, Arbitrum, we, we recently launched. And um, people can actually interact with this contract to um, create storage orders and to yeah, interact with our network, which is, again, its own layer one chain. But it's just mm -hmm. like another um, endpoint to, to connect with it. Yeah, absolutely. But let's look at use cases. I think that's Yay. what most of you guys are waiting for. Sure. So um, let's talk about some very popular use cases. And um, within the DeFi industry, we have a very popular use case, which is hosting of decentralized applications and um, yeah, websites and front ends and um, all the user interface you basically um, interact with when you try to visit um, DeFi dApps. And um, apologies to interrupt you. The question about can we specify geographic regions where the data would be stored? Um, at the moment, we can't do that yet. Uh, in principle, it is possible via geofencing. Um, we sure. are thinking about that as well because uh, we try to adhere to regulations, to GDPR. Mm. Okay, is um, that why? I was trying to make sense of the question of why we would want that. So that makes sense, sure. Yeah, in some cases, sense. especially when we're looking at uh, B2B, uh, not just B2C, then um, sometimes we have yeah. those kind of requirements. You have those requests. Okay, interesting. Good and question, it, Dave. Yeah, it is possible again, but uh, we haven't done it yet. Okay, TBD. Like I love a preview of a roadmap. Okay, I love it. 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, back to back to the benefits yes. of decentralized hosting of dApps and applications. Um, one point again, we said the the availability and accessibility. So I have some yeah more or less recent uh, events here, newspaper cutouts um, that said, for example, major outage hits AWS, many sites affected. Um, below we have a tweet from oops. Oh, sorry, I, it's, I'm overtaking it. Oh, no, we can see it. Okay, yeah. We are back. Yeah. Um, I was, from, someone was saying that they want to use Kara, so I was super excited. Richard went, is um is asking about an SQL database on Crust, um, if we can host that, but we'll, we'll tackle that because let's, let's, we'll stay on, we'll stay on task of use cases now for you. <laughs> I realize I'm really derailing you. I should always yeah. give this as a pre-warning to guests that like. <laughs> all good, all good. No, I, I don't mind it. Okay, um, but okay. quickly, quickly to get back to that, um, SQL databases is a little is, is quite hard because um, you you can't overwrite just what you can't just write into an SQL database on IPFS because the um, the, the files are all unique. So you basically have to create a, a new file. It would be a new file. And um, when we talk about ho data hosting, then um, we can do that for static data, but not for dynamic data yet. Good to good to acknowledge them. But um, that's uh, that's uh, IPFS specific and not uh, not cross specific. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, another cool thing is we saw uh, that uh, the founder of Avi, for example, Stani, he he tweeted it was uh, in January 22. Uh, one of the AF protocol front end wasn't accessible for me for a few minutes. Switched to IPFS and life made sense again. The power of decentralization is insane. Life made sense again. <laughs> And what's, what's funny is that, in fact, we actually host the front end for Avi. We host the front end for Uniswap, Liquidity, and uh, Polkadot apps, and many more. Um, you probably use Crust Network uh, every day if you use Uniswap, Avi, etc. Hey. but you don't even know it. Um, and yeah, they host their front end via our decentralized infrastructure. Oh, cool. And in fact, I think Uniswap and Avi even have 70 replicas of their front end distributed uh, through our infrastructure. And um, yeah, enjoy the benefits of 100% um, availability, um, reduced um, exposure to any kind of uh, front end security breaches like DNS hijack attacks or DDoS attacks and uh, whatnot we, we, we see regularly um, happening in the DeFi sector. Cool. Oh, we have another question if we're ready for one. Um, oh. We like the Apollon idea. Me too. Um, do you want to explain how Crust plays a role in their product? Yeah, um, especially when we're talking. It was a good question. Maybe he has okay. some insider info. I, I know. I was kind of feeling like, are we leading with that question? Like, should you, do you want to weigh in? <laughs> no, all good. Okay. Um, <laughs> Apple and Apple and, uh, are really good friends of ours, of Crust yeah. Network. Um, they utilize uh, Crust for, for, for different scenarios for their, um, yeah, for their tooling platform. Yes, actually, and, and Frank, if you're, if or we should get someone on Apple on, from Apple on to join the seminar. So let's make sure we do that actually as soon as possible. If anyone is watching and can reach out, please, please do. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I can provide you with a contact if needed. Think, yeah, yeah I, yeah, I know. But if, if anyone's watching is what I'm calling out. <laughs> Maybe they are. Um, yeah, but there is like something really new in the works, um, especially looking at website hosting, because um, sometimes we still experience some, some issues for users that are not too familiar with IPFS hosting, especially mm -hmm. when you want to want to associate your, your normal DNS with your, with your IPFS link or with your IPFS. Yeah. NS and so on. And um, Crust Network basically focus on providing the technology, providing the resources, the storage, and Apulon is uh, yeah, making it as easy as possible for exactly. all developers. And you soon can expect a, a nice service. And we're also going to launch an initiative to host um, decentralized or to host websites cool. and apps totally decentralized. And this will be yeah, launched by Apilon and Crust in, in combination. And Sounds like a good collab it. coming up very soon. Also, I should say Snowmead, thank you for the follow on Twitch. We appreciate you. Uh, I know folks are kind of tuning in to, from all different places, which I love. Um, but yeah, thank you for the follow there. Cool. 
All right, what do we have next to next to um, DeFi? There's also NFT storage. Mm -hmm. We already talked about it briefly. So on the one hand, um, we have the, the token itself that runs on chain, the contract, and the contract points to the metadata. And the metadata is actually the, the audio file, the PNG file, the characteristics right. of it. All of this is um, stored in the metadata. And this is right. usually stored off chain. Um, as far as I don't use Ari, for example. Yeah, no, no, good clarification. And um, this off-chain part, again, is mostly provided by AWS, by Google Cloud and, and others. And um, we have this, this link, which is basically pointing to the metadata. And we already said earlier that when I have a location-based address link, then the content behind this location can change. So if I have an AWS link here um, and this contract stays like that for the next 50 years, but Amazon um, or, the, or the, the, the content creator is not paying for the storage anymore, or Amazon is deciding to, to host another content behind this right. link, um, right. then you can't reach your, your NFT. It won't be shown. Um, you can't access the metadata and it's basically worthless. Yep. And um, that's something we have a solution for. We can store it permanently. You can prepay for your NFT metadata for up to 909 years if you want to. Um, it's fully immutable. It's guaranteed by a decentralized protocol and um, it's fully native with IPFS. So it's a, it's a very bulletproof solution for, for yeah. NFT. Yeah. 909. Am I being, am I novice on understanding the, what, where that number comes from? Well, when we have like a, a storage price calculator and at some point it just says uh, 990 years plus. So. Oh, 990. Okay. I was like, 909 feels very specific, but so does 990. Okay. Oh, no, um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Very interesting. And we also work with, with different projects. So um, mm, Remark um, yeah. already is working with, with Crust cool. and we have uh, Crust NFT. It's like an, uh, another product we're working on. Um, NFT Go, we work with Tenor. Um, it's another substrate-based chain, um, NFT-centric chain. Mm -hmm. They recently, I think, moved 300,000 NFTs um, to Crust Network. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, usage and uh, adoption for, for NFT metadata storage. I and think so back, it's... back to the cost question, though, like it's going to totally depend on the usage of it, right? Um, in, in, in which sense do you mean that? Um, yeah, I guess we could like hear some more, uh, like in depth for this question. So feel free to carry on. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, decentralized social is another point. We talked about censorship. Nice. Um, cool. uh, we saw here recently that was also not too far away. Um, when was it? Oh, the data is not shown, but, um, bankless, uh, a very popular, um, very popular YouTube channel yep. got censored basically by YouTube um, without any warning, no justification, no notification. And um, yeah, they just got censored for no reason. And this can't happen if you obviously use decentralized storage solutions or um, decentralized social apps that are built on decentralized storage um, because yeah, power belongs to the user, to the content creator. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, shouldn't be censored by by the, by any middleman. Yeah, and yeah, so we can make content unstoppable, and we can actually put the content back in the ownership of the user. That's and, a dream. Um, we we do that with Subsocial, uh, an another project and parachain in in Polkadot ecosystem, cool. uh, where we where we worked, for example, on Grill Chat. Maybe you heard of it. Mm -hmm. Um, they use Crust Network for that, but also Matters, uh, Sockbay. Sockbay is a is an decentralized YouTube or Friends Tube. Uh, also, G recently released their their product. Um, they all are building on Polkadot and all utilize Crust Network for their. Yay! Data These are the BD wins, folks. You know, this is <laughs> he's got to shout them out. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> And uh, yeah, let's look at some very specific use cases. So um, one thing is we worked on with, with Robonomics, um, that's on our Crust Shadow uh, Kusama network. And there we store machine data of those um, cute little machines. They're called Spot. They are uh, robotic uh, robots from Boston Dynamics. 
and they collect a lot of different data and all of this data will be automatically stored uh, on cross network cool and yeah so so that's one specific use case another use case is um messenger chat backup applications it's um, from xx network it's a privacy network built on substrate and they have a messenger application and users can actually store the backup of their chat not cool. just via google drive icloud dropbox but also yeah. have the option to store it via cross network um we have a question here um it's long i will read it our um Crest allowed to join other uh, DHTs, distributed hash tables from other IPFS ecosystems, like having a unique catalog and navigation system with Crest and IPFS Kubo, for instance, working together. Very complex question. Ah! Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably not too technical enough to answer this with, um, with full confidence. Um, I can I can say that Crust is totally native to to the IPFS um, framework and network, so you can retrieve Crust data or data stored on Crust from any other IPFS endpoint as well. Um, the same way, the other way around, we can retrieve data via our gateways or any data that's on IPFS, not just on our network via our gateways. So I think the um, compatibility should be there. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's. This question is a little bit too detailed for me to give you a to follow up. Do we answer. have a way to reach out to someone or I would love to. Yeah, sure. I can, I can, that. I'm happy to reach out to my, uh, to our CTO. Yeah. Get them like on actually, screen. No, we can. Uh, actually, let me copy paste this question. Maybe. Perfect. Can, um, Thanks. We can see. Okay, cool. Maybe he will be quick, but it's already late in Singapore, I think. Oh, yeah, it's already it's almost 11 p.m. their time. But let's see. Maybe by yeah. the end of the session, I have an answer. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, so many different things you can do with Crust, just to give you some inspiration of um, different use cases. And uh, last but not least, the use case I want to show you is Crust Files. Sure. Crust Files is like a Dropbox-based application. Um, with an easy to use intuitive interface. Um, you can just upload your data via track and drop. Um, it's totally free to use. Um, we have a free version. It looks like version. a nice UI. Looks like um, very familiar, you know, kind of like yeah. not foreign. Yeah, but that's what we so, wanted to achieve yeah. to, um, to, to showcase our technology that from the user interface, it still can be the same, but in the, in the back end, you actually have a securely centralized um, storage. 100%. Um, we have different features there, um, a, a public kind of folder. We have a vault where the data will be encrypted with uh, client-side encryption. Cool. Um, we, for example, have a pay-to-download feature, which is pretty cool. So you can upload, for example, a, a picture to Crust Files, and then you can say, I want to create a pay-to-download link. So then the file will be encrypted, and you can share the link. And if someone clicks the link, then he gets he can pay. He gets to a payment window, and he can pay like whatever... You, you set as payment, like 0.1 Ethereum. And um, as soon as the user basically pays this 1, 0.1 Ethereum, he can open and retrieve the data. Okay. So it's like a pay to download feature um, just to yeah, showcase. Wow. Um, I have to say you're doing an incredible job. We've already convinced someone during the stream that this is the solution for them. So hurrah. <laughs> yeah. Great. What, what can we ask more for? No, literally, this is the dream, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, so cool. And uh, also here, here the URL crossfiles.io. Oh, yeah. if you want let's to pull that up just so folks can. Um, oh, crossfiles.io. Yeah, the one you're pulling up is something that's, that's following after this. I, I can put put this one up too. So, yeah. Um, so this is that. Um, if folks want to check that out, and I will also put it in the chat so that we can quickly link to it. Yeah, and there's no KYC. You can log in um, via Web3 authentication. So either via um, your, your MetaMask, you can uh, oh, okay. use your um, yeah the Polkadot extension, um, cool. Crust, Crust Web Wallet. Um, you will see uh, almost impossible for you not to get access. 
cool. Then um, let's jump to one last thing I brought with me, and this is sure. Trust Cloud. Trust Cloud is a very new product. We actually just released, we just released it today. Okay. Oh, to uh, stop. Actually, today, yeah. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I feel so cool having an exclusive. Uh, we put it in the chat. Go check it out. This is so cool. Amazing. And yeah, and this is something what very is revolutionary. It? <laughs> uh, it, Tell it me will, more. <laughs> it will redefine decentralized storage as we know it. And um, this is mainly because for the very first time, we will be able to treat our data and storage resources in the same way we treat, our, uh, we treat all our other on-chain assets. Let's say our NFTs, let's say our um, tokens, our liquidity positions. For all of them, we have proof of ownership. All of yeah. them we can, we can hold in our own wallet, in a non-custodial wallet. Uh -huh. um, all of them we can transfer freely between accounts and all of them we somehow can trade. So even my mm. liquidity positions, I can trade. I can trade my NFTs, my tokens. So we have full control over it. Um, and we do that now with storage. And we do that by all introducing right. Web3 storage buckets. Okay. And Web3 storage buckets basically are NFT-based storage capacities that live on IPFS. Okay. And... Um, so basically what you can do is you can uh, go to our NFT contract and you can mint a 10 gigabyte storage capacity or you can mint a 100 gigabyte, a one terabyte, whatever you want. Okay. And yeah, let's pull up this slide. It's maybe yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can mint the bucket straight from our contract. Uh -huh. um, after minting the bucket, you will receive the, the bucket NFT to your wallet. And this NFT grants you ownership to access and to yeah, write to your storage capacity. And um, at the same time, this bucket, because it's like a normal NFT, you uh -huh. can treat it like a normal NFT, which means you can transfer it between accounts, including all rights uh, and benefits of ownership. And you can also go to OpenSea and basically sell your bucket, depend, regardless if it's like a bucket that's filled with data or a bucket that's empty. Um, you can go there and trade it like any other NFT. Yeah. And um, yeah, the cool thing is that it's also provided by a, via cross network with all the advantages, all of our product features, the multiple replicas. Um, it's truly immutable. And um, it's also very flexible because we offer different bucket types. At okay. the moment, we provide the permanent bucket, which basically is a pay once and store forever. Well, 100 years. Plus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, soon we also that's that's how we uh, that's what we launched in our um, go to market product. But soon we also going to introduce renewable bucket, which is also like an on a yearly subscription basis. Sure. Um, where you can go there, and you can say, okay, I need more bucket for one year, or I want to extend it for two years, and so on. Yeah, the pay as you go um, model really is. Yeah. Is, yeah. Cool. But as Correct. of today, we have the permanent. Yeah. And actually, I would love to jump with you into the application itself. Quickly. I would love that. Are you kidding? Of course. Douglas, thank you for saying this is a great talk. Oh, we appreciate that feedback. I love, I'm a, words of affirmation are my love language or is my love language. So absolutely appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is lovely folks. Um, I just yeah. think that a, you've done an awesome job of summarizing why we care about this uh, and why this storage solution is the way of the future. Um, so, yeah, I really I um, but then also understanding folks that are using it themselves and teams like that's really helpful for people as well. So let's look at and again, I want to shout this out that this is crosscloud.io, correct? Yeah. No, cross, yeah. correct. cross files is yeah. what we saw at the beginning. Cross cloud. And then I also have some docs, a link to that as well. If folks are wanting to, you know, a, a, a developer always wants to get their hands dirty into the docs. So that's this as well. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Um, to give you a quick overview of how to put cross network into our portfolio. Please. Um, yes, yes what exactly. We, what I think folks are ready for. What we did right or what we, what we achieved so far was building our protocol stack, our decentralized physical infrastructure is more the infrastructure as a service. 
This is uh -huh. like our, our protocol stack. This is our 1,700 nodes with over yep. 700,000 terabyte of storage capacity. That's the infrastructure um, we have. And to, to utilize that or to leverage that and to provide easy solutions to, to builders and to developers to make sense out of this, we launched our product Cross Cloud, and which acts more as a platform as a service or software as a service product for decentralized storage um, resources and demands. And um, yeah, within this, we launched the Web3 buckets and the Web3 gateways, which is our commercial solution for decentralized storage. And um, wow. yeah, we... We just went live today. Actually, we went live a week ago, but um, we announced it today. Okay. And Love I wanna... that things are launching today. This is perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just let's quickly connect with our uh, MetaMask, for example. Um, we can't see that. I imagine you're not showing that, but I'm just, you, I think you might only be showing like a win, but that's fine. Oh, yeah, my a MetaMask pop-up won't be showing, I think. Of course, but that's why oh, we all oh, I know should be mean. familiar oh, with yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. You know what I mean? Like when you're only showing a particular window. Um, Crest token available in Stellar Swap. Yeah. We talked Sorry, about token I... earlier. We're working on that. Um, that's soon. Pokeswap Crest. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let so, me know when you're ready for And I will pull it up. Okay. You want this? No, you should see the screen. We can. Yeah, so and we're here. in. He already this is your bucket. bucket. Yep. That's my bucket, which I minted um, from our contract. And I have an okay. overview. I can see it's like a 10 gigabyte bucket. Um, and it's used with yeah, 1.9 megabyte out of 10 gigabyte. I have three files. I see when it was created. I can pull up the metadata. I can pull up my IPNS link. Can view the NFT uh, contract. Douglas, you beat me to this question. You were saying that you use your MetaMask. Can I connect my Polkadot.js wallet? Uh, for Crust files, yes. For Crust Cloud, for our proof of concept, not yet. It's um, as ERC721, but we also will mm -hmm. deploy to Polkadot very soon. Um, Douglas, you lead to a great, we should clarify when folks join the stream that like, be warned, your roadmap will be informed based off of feedback. But I think it's like the most authentic way to get feedback from developers and users of like what people want. And so it's just like, you know, just a heads up to the team, like, hey, Chris, we might have some new things we want to put. I mean, I imagine getting the Polkadot.js wallet like connected was already on, on your purview, but it just, it validates that people really want it, I think. And I think that that's really valuable feedback. <laughs> Yeah, and, and in fact, we even have some yeah, applications in the Polkadot uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem that already utilize those mm -hmm. buckets. Exactly. Um, even if they are on ERC seven twenty one NFT at the moment, um, like for example, Grill Chat for Subsocial, we recently uh, launched an, an article together where we explain how we utilize those buckets to store the chat backup or user history in those yeah. buckets. Um, if you want to read it, check Very out cool. our medium. Uh, but, um, okay, we haven't linked that, but we should later on. Frank likes the UI, by the way. So, cool. Thank you. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, and we can we can enter this bucket. Okay. And we can enter this bucket by yeah either uploading just uploading any data from our um, nice. desktop PC, um, or we can use different APIs to actually um, put data in our bucket totally automatically. Love it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is exactly what I would expect to see in there. So that, that's cool. Mm -hmm. and then link to the docs sure yeah smart but let's mint a new bucket okay um, i can say mint the bucket and uh, i told you we at the moment offer only the permanent bucket so uh -huh. it's like um, soon yeah you pay okay, once you yeah and mm -hmm. this is the permanent bucket you pay once and you have storage basically guaranteed forever and we also have different kind of bucket sizes Basically, theoretically, we could scale them in any size if we want to. Um, but we started out with those three different options. And um, then you choose your bucket, you go in the next step, and you go like a normal, um, let's say, minting process of another NFT. My MetaMask opened again that I have to confirm and sign. Right. I will get some different information. I love. Okay. Okay. I get the IPNS name of the bucket. It will be generated and published to IPFS. Then I can even customize my bucket itself a little Ooh. bit. Ooh, purple, purple. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then it basically creates all the metadata. 
it will uh, be stored or prepared to be stored decentralized on cross network Hello. and in the last okay. step and in the last yeah. step i make the payment uh, process okay i'm going to skip the payment now um, but i think you all know how that works mm, yeah <laughs> and um, at the moment we have yeah we we, we offer the storage cool. the permanent storage for one dollar per gigabyte Okay, good. So that was, remember, I think there were some folks asking that question, but that's helpful. Wow. That's awesome. This is so cool. I think we have a lot of folks that are enthusiastically like stoked to go try and to build. Um, yeah. And because... yeah, I think you, you're also, your audience is wide. This is who doesn't need this, you know? Like. <laughs> Yeah, and this is opening a lot of doors for new exactly. use cases with, with a lot yeah. of uh, new benefits. Let's think about the decentralized social, the Facebook of tomorrow. Um, when we upload our data to, to those platforms, then we upload it basically to the operator of the platform and the mm -hmm. operator again chooses a storage solution. Yeah. Like even, even if the, the platform is decentralized, mm -hmm. if the uh, platform operator uses AWS to store all the data, then like we still don't have user control right. and, or user ownership. And in this case, we could assign a bucket to every user account. And when I upload my selfies or my videos, yeah. I don't store it and upload it to the platform operator itself. I upload it to my own bucket where I control the data, where I can transfer the data and where I have full ownership of my uh, content. Yeah. And um, wow, the same with, same with um, NFT collections. When I'm creator, I want to upload a 10K collection I don't want to open upload it to OpenSea. I don't want to upload it to, to, to AWS. Why can't I upload it to my own bucket? And so I can upload exactly. it to my own bucket, have full ownership over it. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll never have to trust any third party. Um, yeah, I mean, a perfect summary. Okay, Douglas has become my official question asker of the stream. Please join me in all future streams. Really appreciate it. Um, payment, um, always an ETH. No, um, we will at the moment. Yes, again, we just launched but we'll today. But, uh, of course, yeah, yeah. we're seeing this very early version, folks. <laughs> we will be adding uh, at least one stable coin and also um, our own CAU token because we have an ERC twenty token uh, also on uh, of our own token. Cool. So uh, since this is on ERC twenty at the moment or ERC seven twenty one to be correct as, as NFT contract. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but right. again, we will we will branch out to Polkadot to other ecosystems and um, we appreciate we, it. <laughs> yeah. And then uploading size limitations. Um, the we are we are in this case we are limited by IPFS itself. IPFS sure. has an um, upload That's limitation the, of yeah. thirty two gigabytes, I think, per file. Okay. okay. Oh, and then this is a good question. Um, can I assign a DID? to control a bucket yeah 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 you could yeah, do that absolutely you could do that in, in fact um we we also great use case love love that yeah we also talked um with, with different um did projects um but there we come back often to the to the uh, gdpr again mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, sure. so it's it's not not so easy um of course but it's technically uh, possible. It's yeah. if anything holds us back, then it's regulations again that that require for uh, geofencing or, or mm -hmm. anything else. Well, Jafar said it the best, Dad. Or well, and I think you said it first too as well. But this is the database for tomorrow. Um, yeah, I really, I really appreciate you showing and sharing all of this with us today. Um, I think folks are really stoked to go play and experiment and try out their own particular use cases. Where can people reach out to you and your team to learn more um, after watching this? Because again, you know, this, this video will live on on YouTube. So hello to us in the future. Um, I hope you're well. And um, thank you for watching this. We uh, would love uh, to, I'm sure you there's a way for people to to ask questions and build community within the crust ecosystem yes yeah sure um feel free to 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 either get in direct touch with myself um mm -hmm. i think i had my my, my 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 twitter and my telegram somewhere if not i can yes. post it um we also <laughs> we also are available um via discord and um, okay you have a discord so all usual social channels, you can you can reach us anytime. 
Awesome. Let me pull up some links um, that you all, um, did you, sh do you have a link to your discord? Yeah, oh yeah, you got it. Time. Okay. Um, if data is considered a valuable commodity, then data storage should be considered a store of value. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay. So follow on Twitter. Crest Network <laughs> is where we should go. Um, and you are what? Jesus in Crest? Did, what was it? Did, <laughs> I will put it away. Oh, Can I put it in the Jesus Crest. Oh, there's a the too. Okay. So yeah. the, um, and then wait, there, was there an underscore, underscore Jesus yeah, underscore. Crest like that. So wait, you're locked into Crest forever then. Like this is your social media. You are declaring it loudly. This is, um, That's oh my perfect. gosh. Okay. Perfect. Um, yes. Go pepper him with questions. So fun. Uh, this has been such a joy. And then of course also, yes, me too. This is truly, um, one I will not forget. Uh, folks, thank you so much for joining me this week. We uh, uh, stay tuned. Of course, we'll have um, more great, you know, uh, presentations and whatnot uh, coming up in the future. We will, I will see you in Decoded. Uh, that is so exciting. That's very soon. And yeah, I really, um, as always, had so much fun. Folks, thank you for asking your questions. That is truly my favorite part about all of this uh, is being able to hear from you and hear your questions. I hope that this was informative for you in regards to like what people are wanting. I think that that is, that's really valuable data, hopefully. Uh, but yeah. yeah, until next as time. As already folks, stated, Oh, Everybody ahead. needs some storage. And um, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your absolutely. awesome questions. Uh, and thanks to it. you, Lauren, as well, obviously. Hey, I've, I have a really fun job, right? Like that. this is what I get to talk about all day. Love it. Um, okay, cool. I will see you all soon. I believe the next episode that we have is someone from, oh, my friend Tarek from Parody is joining. We're talking about tooling. I'm super excited. Uh, uh, see you then. Bye. <laughs>